All right, folks, you're not going to believe this, but these two sets of tomato seedlings were started on the exact same day. So what's the difference between the two of them? Well, this one over here, it was started utilizing the materials and method that I used in my first year of seed starting when I had no idea what I was doing. Now, since then, I have learned a whole lot and I've ran tons and tons of little experiments, tweaking and playing around with each individual little variable, which allows me to now grow really, really, beautiful thriving seedlings and so today I'm going to walk you through step by step the exact materials that I utilize for starting seeds as well as the method that I go about for starting seeds so that you can have beautiful seedlings like this this coming year all right so I'm so excited to begin diving in here plus starting seeds that like marks the beginning of the gardening season it's just the best so we're going to break this video into two sections first we're going to talk about the materials that are needed to start seeds successfully and then we're going to talk about the actual method for utilizing those materials in order to have your seeds germinating and growing into beautiful little plant babies and so as we go through this if you have any questions at any point whatsoever please 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 leave those down in the comments because I start my by answering each and every one of them so if you have a question i'm going to get a response to you super super quickly if it's left down in the comments there and so to begin diving in with materials i'm going to grab this box here so the first material that we need to have on hand are da, 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 seeds. I think it should be fairly self-explanatory here that if we are looking to be starting seeds from scratch, then we're obviously going to need to have some seeds on hand in order to do so. And so for myself, I'm a huge fan of West Coast Seeds. Been using it since about 2016. And so everything that you see in terms of videos that we put together or any of the pictures on our website, our Instagram, those are all grown with West Coast Seeds. So I've had tons of success with them. Absolutely love them. Their seeds. Okay, so we've got our seeds. We need something for our seeds to be living and germinating in. So our second material is seedling mix, or in this particular instance, our worm casting seedling mix. And I'm a huge fan of utilizing that because it's got the sifted compost, plus it's got the worm castings in there. So the little plant babies, as they germinate, they're gonna have all the nutrients, all the microbes that they need to really be thriving from day one. All right, so the third material that we need to have on hand, and I'm not going to lie, this is the most important of all of the materials. This is the one that you absolutely want to have on hand. I wish I could say it was the seedling mix, but this one is even more important. And that is, whoa, let me grab that, a grow light. So we want to have a really good grow light as part of our seed starting station. And think of it somewhat similar to building a car. And, you know, we're going to put our seeds into our seedling mix. And you can think of the seedling mix like the fuel, the energy source for them to grow. But the grow light, that's more similar to the engine. And so we could have a cool car and we could have amazing kind of fuel in there, but if there's no engine, then the car is not gonna be driving anywhere. Similar with our seeds. If they're not getting really amazing light, then they're not gonna be able to grow and really thrive from the beginning. All right, so our fourth material that we want to have on hand, we've got our seeds, we've got our seedling mix, we need something to be putting them in, and that is our seedling tray and seed cells. I really like to utilize three inch seed cells. We can get a good amount of seedling mix in there and 18 of them fit onto one tray. Gives you that nice little bit of versatility and flexibility to be able to move things around depending on how the plants are growing there. Okay, so we've got our seed cells and tray in place. We're down to our final two materials here and the next one is a thermometer. So what you're going to notice is that your seeds will germinate at a much lower rate when the temperature is below 70 Fahrenheit. So we wanna have our thermometer on hand so that when we look at our seed starting station, we can ensure that it is at least 70 Fahrenheit to be giving those seeds the highest likelihood of successfully germinating. All right, so that brings us to our last material and we're going to need something to be watering our seed mix and ultimately our little plant babies with and that's where my favorite weapon of choice is bah, 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 the turkey baster yep you heard me right turkey baster might be a little bit of a surprise because it's not some beautiful fancy little like watering spout but it works super super well because it limits the amount of water that you can get at once so you can have it very even across all of your seed cells so those are all the materials that we want to have on hand here and one thing that is super super cool is that this is the exact seed starting kit that we sell on our website so if you're like i don't want to have to go and track down all these different things 
We literally sell all of this in this box and ship it right to your door so that you can be growing with the exact same setup that I utilize, which also makes it super quick, super easy for any troubleshooting along the way. I'm gonna get this box out of the way. So I wanna begin diving into the second part of our video, which is how do we actually utilize these materials to start our seeds? You're going to be blown away with how simple, how easy it is. But just before we dive into that, for those of you that I have not met before, I'm Jordan from Mind and Soil, where we're looking to introduce a million individuals to mindful gardening. So if you're looking to feel more peacefulness, more calmness, more restoration in your life, then I really encourage you to subscribe to our channel here because we put out new videos just like this one every single week to be helping you feel more comfortable, more confident in the garden, and and as a result of that, feeling just how great gardening makes you feel. So with that being said, let's get a set of seeds actually started here. And in the very back of this video, I'm going to show you updates over the course of the coming weeks of these seeds actually coming to life following this super simple, super easy method for starting seeds. And so it's only five steps that we need to be following here. And the very first one is that we need to grab our seed cell and we want to fill it to about one centimeter of the top with our seedling mix. And all that I'm doing is just kind of grabbing a handful or so and then popping that into the seed cell. Give it a little shake, perfect. So as you can see there, right around one centimeter from the top. So now the second step is that we need to get this seedling mix moist. This is where we utilize our turkey baster. And so all that you're going to do is you're going to fill it up with water. So one full turkey baste. And then you're just gonna gently and evenly spread that throughout the seed cell here. So just back and forth. Take a look here. So it's nice and moist now. And the reason why we're adding that water is because for the seeds to germinate, it needs to be a moist and warm environment in order for them to begin to grow. So we're gonna do multiple rounds of this watering here throughout the remaining steps. All right, so the third step is to place our seeds into the seedling mix and to get it moist. So all that we need to do is grab our little pack of seeds and my recommendation is to start five seeds for each desired plant that you wanna have in your garden. And then I just come over to my seed cell and I pop first one down, kind of evenly space out the five seeds. Perfect. Now, as I mentioned, those need to be moist as well. So we just go back to our turkey baster and we grab one turkey baste of water and we're gonna come just right over top, just as we did with the first round, now to get those seeds nice and moist. All right, third step is already done. That brings us to our fourth step. And that is that we just wanna simply cover these seeds with a little bit more seedling mix. So I'm just gonna grab like about a handful or even a little bit less. And I just wanna kind of sprinkle that over top so that there's about, you know, about one centimeter, even a little bit less um, sitting on top of the seed cell there. So take a look there and we can see that the seeds are now covered. And as mentioned, that needs to be moist as well. So we're adding our third and final turkey base of water. And this is ensuring that the moisture is not only in the seedling mix below, but also the seedling mix that is above the seeds, kind of putting them in a nice little blanket there that's going to allow them to ultimately germinate. So take a look there. Cucumber is all set there. And what I'm going to quickly do just before we dive into the fifth step is start a set of seeds for our kale, our basil, our tomatoes, and our zucchinis, each of the vegetables that come in the seed starting kit. And voila, so these babies are all set to begin germinating, which brings us into our fifth and final step. And that's simply that they need a warm environment to be living in underneath their grow light. And so this is where you're going to grab your thermometer and you want to find somewhere through out your house that is at least 70 Fahrenheit, 21 Celsius. Alrighty, and here we have our babies now in this environment where, look, I'm gonna grab this thermometer that I always have hanging here and take a look at that. It is just over 70 Fahrenheit, so right above 20 Celsius, 70 Fahrenheit. Everything is perfectly set up for these babies to now really begin to thrive. So what happens? Like, do I just leave them here? What do I do in terms of lighting? So as you can see, I've got the grow light right here. I'm just gonna take you up here real quick. And it is sitting right there, just about kind of six inches or so above the top of the seed cells. And I leave this grow light on for 12 to 13 hours per day. So I've got a little automatically timer. It turns on at 7.30 in the morning and it turns off at 8.30 at night. So these babies, they just hang out underneath that. But what you're also going to notice is that the seedling mix is of course going to dry out. And so what you want to be doing is you want to be watering with one turkey base of water 
every two to three days. So what I wanna do is I wanna now fast forward to day three where we're going to do our first watering of these babies. Alrighty folks, so it is day three here and wanna do a quick little check-in on our babies and give them some water. So let's take a peek. Only on day three and take a look we've already got our first kale babies just starting to germinate. So super exciting that those ones have already come through the surface. Definitely a sign that we're on the right track. No signs of life on the other ones yet, which I certainly wouldn't expect on day three. So all that we want to do today is just grab our turkey baster and we're going to give one turkey base of water to each of them. So I'm going to start over here and just fill it up kind of evenly spread all throughout the top. Perfect, that's how easy and simple it is here. So the watering is done. Now they just hang out underneath the grow light 12 to 13 hours per day, just as they have been. We wanna keep the environment nice and warm. And then we're gonna do our next watering three days from now on day six. So I'll catch you around then. Alrighty folks, so it is day six and we have an exciting update here. So let's take a look at our babies. All right, so I'm really stoked about where they're at. And all I've been doing is just leaving them underneath this grow light for 12 to 13 hours per day. I haven't watered them since day three, but that's the one thing that we're going to be doing today. So I'm just grabbing my turkey baster right here, and I'm just going down the line, giving each of them a nice drink of water. So if you're on day six and you haven't had anything germinate, it's a great opportunity to be double checking some of those variables, specifically temperature, and confirm that it is at least 70 Fahrenheit, as that's one of the biggest pieces um, that would be holding them back from potentially germinating. And so that's really how simple it is here to have our seeds germinating and beginning to grow. And so all that I'm doing from here is I'm just leaving them underneath the grow light as we have been for 12 to 13 hours per day. And then I'm watering every two to three days with one turkey base of water. But as they get a little bit larger, I'm gonna start doing two or three turkey base of water. And again, I'm going off of my eyes, seeing if the seedling mix is starting to look like milk chocolate opposed to dark chocolate, um, and then touching it with the back of my hand to see if any of it is just a little bit dry. And so with these babies just hanging out underneath the grow light, what I want to do is now fast forward a couple weeks to our next and final update of the seed starting video. All right, so you remember at the beginning of this video, I showed you this baby that was absolutely thriving. It is on about day 25, following the exact steps that we've been going through. And I want to show you the rest of the family and how they're all doing. Our zucchini baby is absolutely full of life, kind of bursting at the seams now. Basil, the leaves are looking really, really big, lush and beautiful. You've already seen the tomato baby, our cucumber also in that same boat, and then our kale baby is also thriving here. So folks, that is everything that I wanted to cover off on. If you follow the steps that I walked you through here for starting your seeds and utilize those materials, I know 100% that you will have success with starting your seeds. We've had so many individuals throughout our community over the past year have success with it, and I know that you will as well. And so two final pieces before you take off. If you wanna have a little seed starting tracker like this one over here, then all that you need to do is head down to the link in our description and that is available for download on our website. It's gonna help you keep track of kind of how many seeds you've started, how many have germinated, when you've been watering, all of that good stuff to be kind of learning and honing your gardening craft. The second and final piece is that I need you to go down into the comments and let me know what is not clear. Where do you have questions? What can I be doing to help you out? Please, please, please let me know down in the comments anything that is unclear, any questions that you have so I can be lending a hand on it. Other than that, you have all the information that you need to be starting your seeds. And the next thing that you gotta do is go get those hands dirty. So it's everything that I wanted to cover off on for today. If you do have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next video. See you soon.